Good morning. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear friends, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and the charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the old church the beginning of celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city of salvation, city of our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by the by being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Please raise your palms as we're going to bless the palms. <clears throat> Almighty and ever-living God, sanctify these branches, the palms, with your blessings, that we who follow Christ, the King of exaltation, may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Almighty and ever-living God, who, as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering, and so merit a share in his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. 
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I give my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. My God, my God, oh, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, oh, why have you shake their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let the Lord be his refuge. My God, my God, oh why have you abandoned me? As dogs are Circle me about, wounded me and pierced me. I can number all my bones. My God, my God, oh, why have you? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, becoming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him 
the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Please be seated. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, The crowd, When he was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine, spikenard, She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. They were infuriated with her, Jesus said. Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you. And whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I said to you. Wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, What she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priest to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnish and ready and make preparation for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, 
And as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish, for the Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. He's, I'm sorry. While they were eating, he took bread and said the blessing, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is the blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I said to you, I shall not drink again the fruits of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I said to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, ye will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he turned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up. Let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword struck the high priest's servant and cut off his ear. 
Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with a sword and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area. You did, yet you did not arrest me. But the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priests, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you, are, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power, and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witness? You have heard of the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the courtyard. Then the crack crowed. The maids saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of? Jesus gave him, gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him, to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, 
Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted louder. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them. And, after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting on him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Syrian who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine, drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Please kneel. Please stand. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James, and of Joseph and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. 
There were also many other women who had come up with him from, to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having brought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. During this Holy Week, we focus on reflecting Jesus' death and resurrection. This historically happened 2,000 years ago, but still, why do we do this? And it is only to understand and experience God's love for us. When we, this is also reflecting our own life. And all of us will be dead and gone. And also this festival of the, of the Holy Week, celebrating the death and resurre resurrection of Jesus, should give us a greatest hope. As we go through these sufferings of death, and we are all scared, but this Holy Week, gives us a hope and inspiration and also strength to face our own life situation. Suffering, all of us go through. There are various sufferings, I mean physical suffering, sickness, or mental sufferings. There are lots of uh, fear, anxiety. There are various sufferings we go through. But in the suffering, how do we uh, in, in doing the suffering, how we have to have the greatest faith in God, and that's what the Holy Week is all about. Suffering in disguise is always a blessing. It's kind of very difficult for me to say it, but of course, let us look at it a little more closely. All of us will suffer, are suffering in various ways. And people who have uh, health issues, they suffer physically. And people who went through, go through the betrayal, go through a, a, a psychological uh, sufferings, a suffering of dejection, rejection, and goes on and on. And how do we handle those sufferings? And we all know suffering, during the time of suffering, the greatest love is expressed and experienced. As a minister in my, my ministry all my life, and uh, I mean, last many years as a priest, I have seen experience the deepest love expressed in the hospitals and nursing homes, and also the deepest love is also experienced by the people who go through the sufferings. And that's the time the people go there and express their greatest love for them. And also that's the time that people who are going through suffering experience the deepest love. It is not, it is more than the love, more love is experienced in the hospitals, the places where you suffer, more than the place where you celebrate. And that's where the more meaningful, uh, the, the, we understand the deepest meaning of love. And this, Jesus allowed, and God allowed, the, allowed this incident to go through Jesus' life in order to feel one with us. As Jesus himself 
went through the, the way of the cross, that when we also go through the way of the cross in our life, and we are not alone, Jesus is with us. It is only to give us that, that, that we are, I am not alone in my suffering, and Jesus is there with me, walking with me, the carrying the cross. That's why he said, do not be worried. My yoke is easy, my burden light, and when you walk with me. And that's what this feast, this celebration of Passion Sunday reminds us that when I suffer, when I feel alone, when I go through my physical suffering, when I go through my sickness, when I'm going through my old age, I am not alone. Jesus is with me. And he gives me the strength. And he gives me the, the everything I need so that I, you and I can make our burden light and the yoke is easy. And, and look at let Jesus himself. And more than the physical suffering, and let us look at the 12 disciples who were with him, eating with him, and lived with him for three years. They all ran away. And worst to that thing is, one betrayed him with a kiss. And the another one, though Jesus told him very uh, well, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. No, no, Lord, I'm not, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will never do this for you. I, even if I die, I will not deny you. But he did. Three times. A per perfect denial. And that, ten that can happen to us. The closest to friend can betray us. The closest to family member can run away when we have sufferings. And when we have sufferings, people will run away. And that's what happened to Jesus. That, ha that happened to, Je to Jesus himself. And the gospel says that everyone fled, ran away. And they all went to save their life rather than walking with Jesus. But Jesus is reminding us that you are not alone. I am with you and walk with you. And this is my way of the cross because I am the way. The death is the way that you and I, you and I can have a resurrection. He showed us the way and he is the way and he is the life and resurrection. How do you do that? He humbled himself, my dear friends. He, as he, is, as he heard in the gospel, it is not my will, God, it is your will. And God willed him to go through this to show that you and I can learn how to regain the paradise which we were lost by our sins of pride. So he humbled himself in the second reading, which was, that's what we heard. And Adam and Eve, they were not gods, but they, were, they, were wanted, they wanted to be equal to God. Whereas Christ, though he was God, and he did not find equality with the God, but he humbled himself, took, up the, took as a human, human uh, life, and, and he was denied, and he was, yeah, he was condemned to death. He died on the cross and, and, and came to life so that you and I will have a greatest hope. And how did he do that? And he regained the paradise for us through his humility. And the pride, we, through, because of pride, we lost the paradise. Because of humility, we regained the paradise. And that is the celebration we have it in this Holy Week. And how we can regain our joy. How do we regain our paradise? And what is the way to the life of resurrection? What is the way of hope? Even in the sufferings, in the time of struggle, we should not think that I am alone, but Christ is with me and carrying the cross along with me. And he carried it before, and we are all going to follow him carrying his cross. That's what he said. Those who want to follow me, take up your cross and follow me. I will make your burden light, and I will give you 
strength to carry your cross. And this feast gives us the strength so that you and I can carry our crosses and follow Jesus. There we will have the greatest hope, we will have the greatest joy. Amen. It is through our faith we gain a strength to follow Jesus carrying our own crosses. So let's express that faith. I believe in God. Amen. And Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the fragrance of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. Jesus Christ out to God in his time of need. With the trust that God listens to our prayers. Let us bring our knees before him. Strengthen the wills of the baptized to accompany those in times of suffering, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Thwart the plans of those who seek to harm others this day, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant peace to people who are in their final days of life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Unite all of gathered here in a spirit of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving as we approach the Easter Tritium, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer illness or injury, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our loved ones who have died, and for the people of St. Margaret Mary Parish, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of the suffering, Jesus Christ willingly gave himself up to death on the cross so that our sins might be forgiven. Receive our prayers that during this holy week we may draw ever closer to the faith of the cross and the hope of resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray may first their sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, Yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty Eternal God, through Christ. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our salvation. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly in his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it and gave it his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it his disciples saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, 
before us we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord this bread of life this chalice of salvation giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity together with francis our pope bernard our bishop and all the clergy and all of us gather here before this altar today remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy especially those people who we remember now welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed virgin mary mother of god with the saint joseph with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be your heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ through him with the amen and in him O God almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever Let us pray with the confidence of heavenly father in the words of our lord jesus christ taught us our father hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil Deliver us Lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior Jesus Christ Lord Jesus Christ you said to your apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will you live and reign forever and ever Amen. the peace of the lord be with you always Amen. let us offer one another the sign of peace and love Behold Jesus Christ who showed us the way to the Mount Calvary and he, com he comes to us today to give us the strength to carry our own crosses and follow him. Happy are we called his banquet. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us life everlasting. Amen. Glory, Lord, we remember. 
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us, the, brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Volunteers are needed for the washing of the feet on Holy Thursday. Please see Father Tom if you're willing to participate. Please refer to the bulletin and the final mass slide today for the Triduum liturgy schedule. But it's um, 7 o'clock on Thursday for Holy Thursday Mass, 3 o'clock on Good Friday for Stations of the Cross, 7 p.m. for the um, service, Good Friday service, and the Easter Vigil will be at 8 p.m. and Easter Sunday, 10 a.m. Thank you. So if you don't remember her announcement, you can see in the bulletin. <laughs> and uh, anybody celebrating birthdays this coming week? Boy, nobody's born in the Holy Week, okay. And uh, just to reinforce what uh, Mary announced, of course, we want to make it as simple as possible. And uh, Holy Thursday service 7 p.m. And uh, Good Friday service 7 p.m. But at the day, we have a station of the cross at 3 p.m. So check those. Then on Saturday, there won't be any regular 4 o'clock mass. But instead of that, of course, we have Easter Vigil Mass at 8 p.m. and Easter Day Mass, as usual, Sunday Mass at 10 a.m. And thank you very much. And also, after this Mass done, I need some, uh, we need some people to help to decorate the altar. And uh, all, this year, all these days, the Holy Week, and the lots of work people uh, do various works. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to them in the name of the parish starting from the sacristans and uh, the altar servers and the music people, I mean, Mary and, uh, and their team, and uh, ushers, many, many people, especially decoration people, all of you do a great job. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, let us stand together for a final blessing. And after the blessing, we quietly leave, meaning with the silence we go, and reflecting on the death of Christ, and also the death of uh, Jesus on the cross, and also the theme of uh, Holy Week all this uh, all this week, and uh, reflecting on that. And I invite you, all of you to come for the, the Paschal Trudum, which, which starts on the Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and and Easter Sunday. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a nice day.